you hate government, one of them libertarian types, or maybe you just can't stand the president, gun grabbers, or warmongers. Me too. That's why I invented LibertyStickers.com. Well, Rick owns it now, and I didn't make up all of them, but still, if you're driving around and want to tell everyone else how wrong their politics are, there's only one place to go. LibertyStickers.com has got your bumper covered. Left, right, libertarian, empire, police, state, founders, quote, central banking. Yes, bumper stickers about central banking. Lots of them. And, well, everything that matters. LibertyStickers.com. Everyone else's stickers suck. All right, you guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton. It's my show, Scott Horton Show. And on the line, I got Philip Weiss from the Mondo Weiss blog. Hey, uh, welcome back to the show. How are you doing, Phil? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing real good. Appreciate you joining us uh, no on the show today. Um, everybody, uh, Phil Weiss, he, uh, he keeps MondoWeiss.net. He's got a great stable of writers over there. Uh, the title is The War of Ideas in the Middle East. And so it's, uh, news and politics, uh, focused obviously on, uh, Israel, Palestine and the Israel lobby in the United States as well. And, uh, all this kind of stuff. I do hope you'll sign up for their morning email and just keep track of what's going on Thanks, at, at Mondo Weiss. It's really great stuff, man. It really is. I, I absolutely rely on you. Um, and so now this one goes back. I got quite a few articles here by, uh, I want to go over as many of them as I can, but, um, I want to start a couple of weeks ago with this one here, October 18th. Goldberg, that is Jeffrey Goldberg at the Atlantic says the root of the conflict is the Palestinians anti-Jewish narrative. So first of all, for those not familiar, could you catch us up? Who is Jeffrey Goldberg and, and why is he important? Jeffrey Goldberg is the most important uh, journalist for the Israel lobby in the United States. He uh, is a very successful and um, uh, witty uh, writer and media figure. Uh, he uh, found anti-Semitism to be so strong in the United States that he moved to Israel in the 1980s and joined their army uh, and uh, ultimately came back here because uh, he found that society a little too... Um, uh, 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 provincial, I think, and closed. And he wanted to have a big career, which he's having here. But he acts as Israel's uh, mouthpiece in this country. He just always stands up for uh, Israel. And this thing is uh, uh, an article that's horse manure. It says that the root cause of the conflict is that Palestinians don't accept the ancient connection of Jews to the uh, land of, of, uh, of Israel, uh, the biblical connection. That's why they, they'll never accept Jews' connection. Well, these people are, uh, you have uh, people living under occupation. Um, that's the problem. Uh, people living under military occupation have no rights. Five million people. That is a problem. Yeah. All right. Well, a couple of things there. First of all, and obviously we're going to talk about the occupation, but just in religious terms, Muslims know that it was the Jews who first obviously didn't invent, but uh, identified the one God that they believe in, too, the very same God of Abraham and Moses, and they respect Jesus as a prophet, if not the Savior, and they're another break-off of Judaism, just like uh, Christianity is, and who in the world would deny that? Find me the most Bin Ladenite lunatic uh, imam on this planet to deny the the uh, history of the invention of monotheism, I and mean, that's their story, too. Right, but I mean, you're an you're, Scott. You're that—that that is a very rational and intellectual assertion on your part. I accept it, but there is some concern that this conflict has this religious component, and some of the hatred is uh, infused with religion on both sides. You know? Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't deny that. I'm just saying Jeffrey Goldberg's premise here is just. It doesn't even stand up on the face of it, it doesn't oh, seem no, like no, to me. No, no, if Muslims believe in yeah. Islam, then they yeah. believe in the same God that the Jews believe in. Yeah, and I mean, let's just uh, let's just be clear here. The father of, of uh, Zionism was Theodore Herzl. And when he was trying to start a Jewish state a hundred years ago, long before uh, the Jewish state was actually started, 50 years before, he always promised everybody from the czar to the pope to the sultan, we will internationalize Jerusalem. We will not control Jerusalem and the holy places. That's a recipe for endless war. And FDR recognized that in 1940s when they were saying they wanted a Jewish state uh, that they, they would control uh, Jerusalem. He was saying, y you know, you're trying to start a jihad. So, of course, it's going to create, you know, you, you can't have Israel 
having sovereignty over the uh, over the old city of Jerusalem. It's just not fair. It's not going to work out. And by the way, it didn't work out that well when the um, when Jordan had um, uh, sovereignty over it. So uh, I think it has to be internationalized. Well, and so, and this gets back to the actual conflict on the ground here, which never mind the actual Jewishness of the Jewish Israelis there, the the humanity of them and the state that they have created there is never mind being a fait accompli. It's actually already been recognized as legitimate within the 67 borders by the Palestinian Authority and even by Hamas. Is that not correct? Absolutely. I mean, consider, here are these Palestinians who 67 years ago, they were promised a state. And within a year, the Israelis, they got their state, and the Palestinians have been waiting seven, eight decades, no state. And then 35 years ago, or 30 years ago, the Palestinians said, okay, we give up our revolutionary struggle. We're not going to try to remove Israel from uh the, you know, the map. We are going to accept Israel's existence on nearly four-fifths of the land, and we will take a state on the fragment that's left over. And Israel, rather than pocketing that generous offer in 1988, has continued to colonize the land. Israel has destroyed the two-state solution, and that is what we are seeing now in all the violence. We are seeing a young generation that has no rights and that uh, and is subject to settler violence, and they are responding in this uh, impulsive and violent and awful manner, but they have no rights. Mm. All right, now, so I have a hard time taking anything Jeffrey Goldberg says seriously or even honestly from his point of view kind of thing. However, it, this is a very familiar trope. I guess it doesn't really matter whether Goldberg himself believes his own BS on this, but it seems like this is really the widespread belief in Israel. They hate us because we're free. They hate us because right. we're Jews. They hate us right. because we're good. Right. And right. and never mind the occupation at all. It is the the anti-Semitism that is born into everyone who is not a Semite, and never mind the fact that they are Semites. Right, and it's sort of like, uh, you know, how do conflicts end? Conflicts end with political solutions, and there's got to be a political solution of this one that addresses Palestinian concerns. And it's not that they're trying to extirpate Jews from uh, the, the land of uh, Israel or Palestine. I mean, they are uh, – Muslims will point out that they lived, as you, as you observed, they lived for thousands of – well, for over a thousand years – with Jews um, in, largely peaceably throughout the Middle East. Now, in some of those cases, Jews were second-class citizens, yes, uh, or they had a different status in Muslim societies. But they had, uh, uh, actually, they did better in those societies, Jews, by and large, than they did in Christian societies at the same time. Yeah, and they protected the Christ they protected the Jews from the Christians during those times. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I have a sense that that's the case. I'm not, yeah, I haven't done the... Yeah, but, like yeah, during I mean, the Crusades um, and during, uh, you know, the Inquisition in Spain, when all the Jews were getting kicked out of Spain, where'd they go? They fled to the Middle East right, to be right, safe. Right, 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 right. I mean, look, history has been unsafe for a lot of peoples, including Jews. My people have had a long history of persecution, but they've also had a lot of success, uh, uh, Jews. And um, you can't just look at everything in terms of your victimization, which is what uh, Jeffrey Goldberg does. One of the most powerful. He's a guy who sets down with Netanyahu. I mean, with uh, Netanyahu and with Obama. He has he has more access than just about any journalist I know because he can address the American Jewish organizations, the Israel lobby. That gives him a lot of power. And this is an era of Jewish power. And I think that uh, part of uh, what is Part of the responsibility that, that, that we have, Americans and Jews, is to recognize this and to get over some of this, uh, this, this claim that is at the basis of, anti, uh, of, the basis of uh, Zionism that uh, the West is unsafe to Jews. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a whole other topic. In fact, let's take this break here. Um, you and I can't hear it, but we should be able to hear the music playing. Cool. Uh, we'll go out to this break, and then that's a good a good point to uh, to get back to on the other side of this break. It's the great Philip Weiss, y'all, from MondoWeiss.net. Don't you get sick of the Israel lobby trying to get us into more wars in the Middle East? 
or always abusing Palestinians with your tax dollars? It once seemed like the lobby would always have full spectrum dominance on the foreign policy discussion in D.C., but those days are over. The Council for the National Interest is the America Lobby, standing up and pushing back against the Israel Lobby's undue influence on Capitol Hill. Go show some support at CouncilForTheNationalInterest.org. That's CouncilForTheNationalInterest.org. Hey, Al Scott Horton here for Liberty.me, the great libertarian social network. They've got all the social media bells and whistles. Plus, you get your own publishing site, and there are classes, shows, books, and resources of all kinds. And I host two shows on Liberty.me. I on the Empire with Liberty.me's Chief Liberty Officer Jeffrey Tucker every other Tuesday, and The Future of Freedom with FFF founder and president Jacob Hornberger every Thursday night, both at 8 Eastern. When you sign up, add me as a friend on there, scotthorton.liberty.me. Be free. Liberty.me. All right, y'all, welcome back. I'm Scott Horton. It's my show, The Scott Horton Show. And I'm talking with Phil Weiss from mondoweiss.net, the war of ideas in the Middle East, mondoweiss.net. Bunch of great writers there, including Phil, of course. And um, Thanks, man. Yeah, well, no, nah, you deserve it. So anyway, the thing is, uh, we're talking about uh, the reality and perception of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, and then right there at the break, you were saying something about how the Israeli government would have uh, diaspora Jews believe that they're not safe in the West and that they got to come to Israel. Yeah, I mean, that's actually uh, one of the things that Netanyahu says all the time, is that uh, the West is not safe. He went to the French Jews and said, move to Israel. So this is the Zionist ideology, and it's uh, completely out of whack with, um, you know, modern Jewish experience in the United States. And, I, you know, I don't want to go to um, a parochial on you here, but uh, this is a Jewish problem, and part of it involves the fact when I first went to Israel, I was 50. I didn't get ino- inoculated with Zionism until – never got it, the inoculation. I only went over there after the Iraq war because I knew that it was part of the American problem. But my Jewish uh, friend over there, a friend of my family, said, you know, we who moved to Israel are, uh, made Aliyah. That means we went higher. And you live in uh, the diaspora, and we call that Yored, which is lower. So they assign a higher spiritual place inside the Jewish community to people who move to Israel. And that kind of, it's a very dangerous form of thinking, and I think it, it actually is something that a lot of American Jews unconsciously subscribe to. Oh, they're over there. They're on the front line. We can't question them. And uh, they're spiritually superior to us. In fact, they're living in a fa- fascistic society that's completely racist, and where they're shooting down Palestinian kids who have no rights because these kids are flipping out and pulling guns. I mean, pulling knives. Well, yeah, and let's get back to that in just a second. But even on yeah. the point of, of you know, Americans, whether I guess, you know, your focus always is on, you know, the American Jewish establishment down here in Texas. There's a lot of, you know, cornerstone church types who are just yeah. Zionist and and who vote Republican as hell. And for that reason, uh, probably a, above very many. But if they love Israel so much and they ought to get in touch with reality a little bit and look at just how destructive this thing is, because it seems like, uh, you know, either the whole thing is just going to come apart under the world yeah. being unwilling to tolerate minority rule under martial law like this forever, or they're going to go full fascism, rename the place Judea, and kill every last Palestinian or drive them into the Jordan River, or something like that. Some kind of you know complete calamity that would completely destroy what they think of as the Israel they're trying to protect. And if they think that, oh, we have to support them because we love them so much, they're crazy. They need to, if they love them so yeah. much, they need to right. tell them to knock it off. This is yeah, murder-suicide take- here. Right. Take away the keys to the car. I mean, uh, look, I I do think we're facing a crisis at last and inevitably, which is that uh, this society that they have, uh, the Israeli Jews have created, is completely inconsistent with Western values. And American Jews are finally waking up to this because some of the good people in Israel are reaching out and saying, please help save us. And save us on whatever terms some of them are saying. We don't care how you help save us. Give everybody 
gosh, give everybody the right to vote. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that American Jews who have led so many important movements for, uh, or been part of so many important movements for freedom and civil rights in the United States, they, by and large, their organizations are supporting a society in which half the people on a racial basis cannot vote for the society, for the government that controls their lives. Yeah. It's Jim Crow and worse, and American Jewish organizations have signed off on it. And now the crisis is happening. The awakening is taking place because mm-hmm. that society is really going down the tube. Right and you know now. what, man? That's such a great way to frame it, too. Voting rights, civil rights, civil the, the right to participate in representative government. That is no offense or whatever, but that is always seems to me a, a kind of higher principle than liberty to liberals. Yeah. And so, OK, good. That is the best way really to appeal to them that on the on their very, you know, civil right, the right to participate in the government kind of a, a basis. Never mind, you know, because if you complain about Palestinian property rights, they go, oh, property rights. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. we're talking about people having their land stolen from them. Right. But no, well, right. you can't really own own land or whatever, you know, but if you appeal to them on voting rights, I think now you're talking, you know, hey, what, what about segregated buses and segregated right. roads and all this kind of thing? These are now you're speaking the language of the civil rights liberals. Right. right. Jewish and, or otherwise. And- yeah, and it's going to take a long time to break in on the American consciousness. It will take a real long time. I mean, last summer, uh, Jewish settlers, illegal Jewish settlers in the West Bank, uh, burned a Palestinian family uh, to death in an arson attack, completely innocent family in a small village. Uh, three members of the family were killed, and all the liberal Zionist organizations in the United States said, oh, this is a t- – there must be – this is they have gone too far, the settlers. There must be accountability. There's been no accountability. The defense minister said, we know who did it. They haven't charged anybody. So there's been complete impunity for this attack, this gruesome attack, worse than, you know, similar to like the Philadelphia, Mississippi attack during the civil rights era here. No accountability. And the Jewish organization, the liberal Zionist Jewish organizations have let the case drop because they can't, it just, it, it goes so much against their dream that Israel is this fair society. It's not. It's worse than Jim Crow. It's worse than apartheid. And three people are burned to death in the most grisly manner, and there is zero accountability. And, and, and that's why the Palestinians on the West Bank, the young Palestinians, are so desperate and so afraid and are, have seen, you know, generation after generation, they were told they would get a state. They've not gotten any rights at all. And yet they're pulling knives. It's terrible. It's awful. I think it's horrible what they're doing. And yet it, it's an inevitable result of this oppression. Mm. All right. So talk about it seems like beyond the, the horrible attack on this family and other recent incidents, it was really and there have been quite a few. Uh, I yeah. couldn't I couldn't really name them all off at the top of my yeah. head because there's too many. But the one that was that really had a lot of photographs that really made the news was the soldier with the with the what seven year old boy or ten year old boy or something in the headlock and fighting and the women fighting him off and protecting the little boy uh, this kind of thing but what really apparently best i can tell really set this off was the change of status of who's allowed to do what at the so-called temple mount or the dome of the rock or the al-aqsa mosque or whatever all you call that place um And uh, so can you explain what changed uh, and, and why it is that that in particular is such a big deal to the Palestinians? Because apparently it has provoked a leaderless kind of, you know, knife uh, intifada here. Yes, I think that uh, I mean, it's it, if you're not a religious person and I'm not a religious person uh, in a conventional sense, it's hard to make all this out. But, uh, you know. These site, this site in the old city of Jerusalem is revered by Muslims, and it's revered by Jews. But the Muslims have a mosque and uh, the Dome of the Rock on this plateau in the old city. And it's always been a Muslim place of worship. And now Jews are trying to go up. They say this is where the temple, the ancient temple was that was destroyed in the 2nd century A.D. And uh, you know, the earlier one was destroyed a couple hundred years before that. And they want to go up there and pray, too. They're not allowed to pray up there, Jews. And yet there have been indications in the last few months that the status is changing. 
And when Palestinians hear that the status of a Muslim place is changing, they think of Hebron, where they used to have sole control of the Ibrahimi Mosque, and suddenly the place was divided, and uh, Jews were allowed to worship there all the time in Hebron, and Hebron was colonized by Jews, uh, and Muslims, uh, Palestinians were forced out of their houses. A similar apprehension has arisen among Muslims in Jerusalem and around that their most uh, holy place in that part of the world, the third most holy Muslim site in the world, is because it's under Jewish control, the, the rules are going to be changed. And Netanyahu took a long time to say, no, 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 we're not changing the rules. He did so. He was. He he did not come out and say we're uh, and and shut down this talk because members of his own government want to change the rules. There are right wing religious members of his government that want more Jewish access to the Al Aqsa compound, the Temple Mount, that plateau, and they are agitating for more Jewish access. And some of them, there's even his minister of agriculture has even been on a video showing the removal of the Dome of the Rock, to make way for the rebuilding of a third temple. So there are religious crazies, obviously, on both sides of uh, this issue generally, but on this case, you have one, pow one, one society that is controlling the space politically, geographically, that's Israel, and some of their leading government figures are agitating for a change in status, and Muslims are freaking out about it. Yeah. Uh, well, pretty simple explanation, if you ask me. I'm sorry we're out of time for this interview. Oh, but sorry if I rambled. No, 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 not at all. Um, it's just that I got to go and we got to go. Great. But um, it's always great to talk to you. I hope that I can Thanks, get you Scott. back on the show. And thank you for keeping uh, all your great writers, uh, Adam and Charlotte it. and everybody. They're just great and, cool. and really appreciate you, Phil. Thanks, Matt. Okay, talk to you soon. All right, see ya. All right, you guys, that was uh, the great Phil Weiss. He's at mondoweiss.net, the war of ideas in the Middle East, and that's it for today's show. Thanks. See ya. Hey, all Scott here for Samurai Tech Academy at MasterSamuraiTech.com. Modern appliance repair requires true technicians who can troubleshoot their high-tech electronics. If you're young and looking to make some real money, or you've been at it a while and just need to keep your skills up to date, Samurai Tech Academy teaches it all. And they'll also show you the business, how to own and run your own. Take a free sample course to see how easily you can learn appliance repair from MasterSamuraiTech.com. Use coupon code Scott Horton for 10% off any course or set of courses at MasterSamuraiTech.com. Hey, all Scott here. If you're like me, you need coffee. Lots of it. And you probably prefer it tastes good, too. Well, let me tell you about Darren's Coffee Company at DarrensCoffee.com. Darren Marion is a natural entrepreneur who decided to leave his corporate job and strike out on his own, making great coffee. And Darren's Coffee is now delivering right to your door. Darren gets his beans direct from farmers around the world, all specialty, premium grade, with no filler. Hey, the man just wants everyone to have a chance to taste this great coffee. DarrensCoffee.com. Use promo code Scott and you get free shipping. DarrensCoffee.com. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here. Are you a libertarian and or peacenik? Live in North America? If you want, you can hire me to come and give a speech to your group. I'm good on the terror war and intervention, civil liberty stuff, blaming Woodrow Wilson for everything bad in the world, Iran, central banking, political realignment, and, well, you know, everything. I can teach markets to liberals and peace to the right. Just watch me. Check out scotthorton.org slash speeches for some examples and email me scott at scotthorton.org for more information. See you there.